Hello all, this screencast is a post-performance review of the pieces that were composed for Gaiman's Meta Knight School uh, for their Christmas 2017 program. So I got this idea of doing this when I got frustrated uh, with uh, music that I constantly had to learn with the children uh, for their different programs and I thought why don't I get a few friends together and let's compose some songs that the children will be able to learn uh, and be able to get a good amount of educational value from it. So the idea was that the uh, different musical elements could be distilled to their you know, bare minimums, that the rhythm would be understandable, uh, something they could grasp at their age level and ability level, and then uh, that they would be able to perform these for the Christmas program. So this is what we got. So the first one here, uh, this was for K through second, was Angels We Have Heard on High. And yes, Beth did a good job. Uh, there were certain criteria that were uh, given. So if you notice uh, the piece, it's mostly on the so and me with some la and a few cases of re and do. Those would be the pitches that we mostly worked with. And I found that it worked better in the end uh, by having this uh, upper minor third. So instead of starting on a G, we would start on a B. And that seemed to work better for the children's voices. So, yep, yeah, that was something that uh, that happened. And uh, yeah, that was, that was a good thing to do. So another thing, uh, just talking about the piece in general, I'm uh, not sure how uh, good this pickup was to have songs with pickups, but, you know, that's just how it worked and, you know, not a big deal. We didn't end up writing it out yet, so maybe I have, would have a few more things to say once we start writing it on, on the two-line staff or or however, however we would do that. Not sure yet. Um, so, yeah, if we look at this part right here, so this was very similar to another piece that uh, that K through second were singing that I wrote, and that is uh, let's take a look here. It is down on the infant holy, infant lowly. Okay, is it supposed to scroll? And it's not. So let's see. Oh, there we go. I have to remove that little um, tool thing there. So yeah, if we go to uh, Infant Lowly, Infant Holy, then you see that at measure 13, measure 13, you have a similar Mi, and then So, So, La, uh, right here. And if you go back to uh, the first piece, you will see uh, Mi, Mi, So, La sequence there. And what happened was that it defaulted to the Mi, So, So, La because that's a bit easier to sing for the children. And as the rehearsals went on, once those two pieces were put together, that's what happened. Uh, so yeah, something to think about there. Uh, when doing things of like nature of having notes or, or a very limited amount of repeated pitches or sequences of pitches. So, but overall, it was uh, quite good and I enjoyed working with the K through second on this piece. So, moving on, we have Hark Sweet Angel Voices Singing, which is a piece I composed. And for this one, uh, initially, what would happen is. Uh, the children would get confused between the two different endings that are here. So if you notice this one, the first one ends on a on a tone that doesn't resolve, it ends on a ray. And the second one we go and resolve it uh, back to uh, back to the do. So initially the children's ears 
they gravitated toward the dough. And so we spent a little bit of time uh, getting, getting it right. Uh, the rhythm here presented no problems, but the tempo tended to increase uh, over the time that the children got to know the song better. And by the time they had it memorized, then yeah, I had to really hold them back for that. So, but that's something that I need to work on to make sure that the beats uh, and the, the beats are consistent throughout uh, practice and then performance. So yes, then we move on to Infant Lonely, Infant Holy. So another song that I uh, composed. And here again, the rhythmic structure is similar across the four phrases that we have here. So if you look at it phrase by phrase, here we have a phrase, and then here we have a phrase, and then here, and then here. And initially that was also a point of confusion for the children initially. But then, as we learned a song a couple weeks into it, then things were fine. And that wraps up the songs for K through second. So then we move on to our next group is the third and fourth grade. So here the amount of pitches were uh, in uh, yeah expanded to to include the pentatonic scale and uh, so here, uh, also I raised this piece uh, when when got down to singing it. It sounded better going up uh, major third. Sorry for the sloppy major third there. Uh, actually, my bad. It was a major second. Yeah, we just did this up a tone. So. Yeah, here in this piece, very straightforward, very nice. Uh, as we were learning it, I did kind of think a little bit that it would be nice if this measure was extended, and that, or that that note there, that D or, or the ray would have been held twice as long, but then that would have went outside of the scope of of the note values that were to be in place for uh, this grade level. Uh, on the second verse, we did a piano here. It worked well with the text. And then uh, the first and second, first and third verses were just done uh, with regular tempo dynamics. Another thing to point out here is that initially uh, the students had trouble with this ray being after this rest so we finish on a, on a ray here and then there we have the rest and then another ray and their ears were i guess taking them to sing a do there uh, but again after a while uh, after a while we overcame that and uh, worked on that some and it uh, corrected itself and another thing that I noticed that eventually, instead of doing this in three, we did this in one when I was conducting. So, O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see the light. And if you heard me just sing it, then, then yeah, that's what, why I tended to or wanted to have that uh, last note here a little bit longer uh, if doing it in one. Although if you do it in three, then it makes sense to hold it just the two beats there so yeah that's as far as this song goes the next song was O Child of Lowly Manger Birth and here again we transpose it up a uh, major second so instead of starting on A we start on B and this was another song that ended up being sung in one or conducted in one. Uh, not much to say here, but on the last line, we had this, what I refer to, this pesky law. It took 
a significant amount of time for them to actually sing the la there instead of the so, which is the previous pitch. And I don't know what that is or why that is, but yeah, it took us quite a while before they would sing the la there. So initially it was, um, lead us thy way and every day guide us. Whereas that's not what's written. What's written is, Lead us thy way, and every day guide us. So yeah, that took a while to do. And yeah, just something we had to work through. Alright, after O Child of Lowly Manger Birth, we have O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, written here by Lynn Martin. Uh, this is another song that ended up working better uh, raised up a major second and one thing that tended to happen was this was another song that the children tried to um, push in the tempo so I had to restrain them and I think it's similar to the one that um, in, in rhythm to one of the songs we did with uh, K through second so again that's something that's um, that I have to work on uh, but just something to consider when writing for that age level and working with that age level. So um, here, fermatas were used instead of longer durations. Uh, and that was a learning experience on how and when to use fermatas. Uh, although it could have been written out as dotted half notes. Uh, we chose not to do that. Yes, so so here uh, I ended up adding a few dynamics, um, most notably decrescendos at the end of phrases, here and at the end, and the children handled those quite well. Here we did a piano, started with piano, and then gradually did a crescendos with another uh, with a decrescendo at the very end uh, the notable thing about this was that it has pretty much the same rhythm as the familiar tune so as we were learning it I was giving the children just the pitches uh, I would write them out on the whiteboard and the, all they would see was do mi mi so so la so mi 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 re do do re so mi so when uh we would do that they would get that without any problem i would draw the uh, the pitch names or the pitch uh, letters and then i would add the uh, the stems on top and the children did it without problem i i did it with following the hand which i would show the curve and hand signs while doing it and the children followed it with no problem singing the pitch uh pitch letters pitch names however as soon as we tried to pair the origin uh, uh the words and we didn't quite have the melody internalized then they would default to singing the old melody which is O come, O come, Emmanuel. That one that's familiar to most of us. And so I found that it had to, uh, we really had to internalize this melody with just the pitch names before I could add the words uh, and for, it, for them to sing it correctly. So yeah, and that's another interesting thing that came out when learning this song. But overall, very nice song. Nice and chant-like, uh, quite similar to the original in that respect. And we had a good time working on it. Also had a good learning experience uh, in uh, the melisma here of singing one syllable across several notes, although I didn't really um, take that apart for them. And again, it was used, uh, and that, that kind of figure is used in the previous melody or in the old melody that's familiar. So, yep. Yeah. All right, moving on. We come to uh, the age bracket of 5th and 6th, which huh, 
I should know the ages, but I don't. I guess so. Let's see. K through second would be uh, up to seventh grades, up to uh, age seven, fifth and sixth, K five, K six, yeah, five and six, and then uh, seventh and eight. Okay, seventh and eight. So this would be nine, eleven and twelve, if I'm not mistaken. These would be ages, yeah, between eleven and twelve, or somewhere in that area. And here, the criteria, or what was allowed was even greatly uh, expanded beyond uh, beyond what we had uh, uh, for for the younger grades. So uh, most notable are the addition of a second voice, the alto part, and rhythms that are more uh, complicated. So we had the dotted uh, quarter note introduced here. Also had things like the eighth rest. And this came out to be quite a nice piece. Thank you very much to Leah for composing it. And a uh, good learning experience here was, again, singing two pitches uh, on one syllable. And for the previous grades, I forgot to mention, the children were not given music. It was learned, uh, if they were given music, it would have been just pitches on a piece of paper and not really on a staff. Although, in hindsight, I should have had that kind of on a, like a two-line staff or three-line staff that would have worked well. And, you know, who's to say that we can't do this now even though the program is over, which I plan to uh, continue the learning um experience or the edu getting more educational value out of these pieces even after the program. So here uh, this part was pretty good to work on uh, for them to see two different pitches on one syllable. Um, what I did here was I had fifth grade on soprano and sixth grade on alto. And that seemed to provide a pretty good balance for the group that I had to work with. Um, initially, this song really took a lot of time because of the rhythms. The rhythms, to internalize these rhythms, uh, it, it was something new to the children. And to get the dotted uh, quarter notes here, and then the eighth notes, and then the eighth rest, we spent quite a bit of time working on the rhythms here, but I'll get to that in a little bit. So this eighth rest was quite troublesome at first, uh, but eventually we overcame that. Another area that was, for some strange reason, was, was troublesome was the sixth grade in the alto. This part just tended to really flat. And I don't know what the reason for that be. It seemed quite straightforward for uh, for that going from uh, the do mi fa mi fa 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 mi do. Uh, it seemed quite straightforward, but when we would split into two parts, then I would have to show that with my, I would have to show a gesture with my hand of an ascending gesture to have them in tune, and that worked pretty well. Uh, but that's kind of baffling to me why why that part would would be out of tune like it was. So out of all the songs for these grades, the rhythm, like I said, took the longest to learn uh, for, uh, for the dotted notes. And looking back, that prompted, uh, that prompted me to sp spend what I think was a disproportionate amount of time on this piece. But on the flip side, it did come out to be the most secure piece of the fifth and sixth grade songs. And I think the bottom line there is that I need to learn how to pace myself, especially in how to hit things during class appropriately. And anyone watching this, uh, I'd appreciate any tips on pacing. I think that's something that uh, I could work on quite a bit. So yeah, but overall, this was a very good piece. And let's move on to what we have next, which is We Hail Thee With Rejoicing. It 
So this piece I took down a, made, a minor second, started on C sharp instead of on a D. That seemed to work well. Maybe as we go on, there will, uh, we'll see a reason why. So one, uh, th one thing to point out here is the mixed rhythms here. Words that are similar, but the rhythms being mixed with uh, here being quarter note, half note, and here being the half note and the quarter note. And initially, as we were learning it, there was a lot of, especially in the first verse, rejoicing, uh, where some of the children uh, didn't quite place that right. But that was solved quickly with uh, conducting gestures and didn't really pr uh, present much of a problem. And it wasn't a problem at all for the, uh, for the second and third verses. Here at this spot, I found out that there was a tendency in the sopranos not to hold out the full value of the three beat, um, the three beat note there, the dotted half, which caused this note in the altos to kind of be left hanging. So yeah, that's something else that needed to uh, be worked on. And then moving on, not a big problem here. Ah, measure eight, measure eight. If you notice uh, from right here to right um, to this part, there is a big leap here from the uh, as the notes go. So you have this me that they end on, and then you have the do, and then you have the fa. So that's quite a big jump, and that was the part that worried me the most uh, during the program. Because uh, at rehearsal, even at the very last rehearsal, we worked that thing and worked that thing, and you know, I came away not knowing how it's going to end up the next day. But to my surprise, it, w it went quite well. Uh, they they did what uh, they were supposed to, and uh, what I did to try to help them was I showed them as we were going there. I showed them the the me with my hand signs, uh, and then the do, and then the fa. And I had to tr do that uh, somewhat inconspicuously because this was during the program, and you can't just be showing hand signs for everybody to see. Uh, that kind of gives away <laughs> your lack of preparation. Um, so, so yeah, but that was a big jump, but that caused some difficulty for, for the children to get it quite right. And they, uh, but they did a good job with it at the end. So, yeah, came out well. Even though this uh, piece was still supposedly uh, had to be uh, pentatonic, at least for the melody, there were a few strategic faws inserted, as can be seen here and here which flowed quite well and again thanks to Wendell Glick and his suggestions on on this uh, it worked quite well and provided uh, harmonic interest there another spot that was uh, somewhat of a hard place to work on was this area and the reason for that was because it was uh, very similar uh, to the area at the end here. Let me move this over a little bit. It was, uh, so this spot right here was similar to this. And, you know, uh, initially that caused some confusion there. So I'm almost thinking that a good strategy for that would be to start learning songs from the very end. I keep meaning to try that, but haven't gotten around to that yet. But yeah, you basically just start learning phrase by phrase. Um, you would learn, you know, the ending first up to here. And then you would expand that to uh, where would be a good spot? Maybe to right here and to the end. And then you would keep going back phrase by phrase. So yeah, I've um, experimented some with that as we learned the songs, but never from the very beginning would I have learned a song uh, from the very end going backwards. But it's something I would like to try. 
So going on, uh, yes, there's also this one uh, piece here where here the rhythm could have been similar to the beginning. Uh, like like we can see uh, like we can see in spots like this and like this but to create some rhythmic uh, variation it was done with two uh, two half notes instead of uh, a dotted half note like can be seen here and that was another thing that we had to work on with the children uh, the last thing that I wanted to say about this piece was here for these notes uh, at the very end. Uh, let's try that again. Uh, for the very end, the sopranos end on a do and the altos end on a low mi. However, when they go back to the beginning, they have a unison here. So neither of them are singing the same pitch as they finish on. So that was something that we had to work on some and I kind of assumed that tr the transition would just happen but that's not necessarily the case. Transitions are something that really have to be practiced. Uh, it did help that the beginning was on a unison and then there were other points that of of unison that really helped if some of the children would get off there would be a place that they could meet back on and pitch. Uh, so here will be another spot. So yeah I think that's all I had to say for for uh, this piece. So moving on to another fifth and sixth grade song. So this was written by Candace Martin, and this was a fun song to work on. It was a really nice, uh, nice melody put to the traditional lyrics, and as you can see, lots of moving parts here. So that was really fun to work on. Uh, here, the piece uh, for the final, uh, the final way of performing it, we put it down a minor second as well started on an F sharp instead of instead of G and this is a uh, another piece that has a good amount of uh, variation in how many in the range of the pitches so you can see the altos lowest note is uh, Do here uh, low C and this became uh, yeah and here's a um, high C and let's see here. And the uh, sopranos also, I think their lowest note is a G going up to high E. So, yeah, it just worked better to put it down half a step. So, here, uh, let me look at my notes here. Uh, here, I had this idea uh, at, as we were learning it that I would have the children be able to, like I assign homework for them to be able to take any measure and sing the pitches uh, from that measure. So for example, if I told Michael to sing uh, the pitches from the alto part of measure two. So it'd be fa, mi, so. And that didn't quite work. I thought that it would uh, work for them to learn on their own, uh, but I guess that's the level that they're at right now. Uh, so yeah, it's something to keep working on to be able to see pitches and sing uh, them as as they're written. Uh, but yeah, something that I need to continue working on them with. All right, uh, another spot was there was a tendency to take a breath uh, here where it just did not make sense actually that's the wrong sign that's not what I wanted to draw so take a breath here and that just really broke up the phrase and partially was my fault that I let them do it in initially 
without thinking ahead that if they learn it to take a if they learn to take a breath there, they'll just you know keep taking a breath there when it's time to do the program. Uh, so I tried fixing it several weeks into it, but it didn't go quite as well as I hoped. So yeah, habits, habits. Uh, another area that that happened was in uh, uh, measure uh, 15 here. So the tendency was to add breaths here, which didn't quite belong. Um, here at this spot, it was a similar to one of the previous songs, uh, an issue that appeared was there was a tendency to flat when ascending. And again, I had to uh, uh, gesture, like, um, yeah, over, take my hand and just gesture over my hand, show them the musical line uh, for the intonation to stay there. And I had them do it during the rehearsal as well. Just take the hand and I insisted that they would uh, show, uh, show that gesture over uh, their over their head when going up to that part and that worked well so moving on here we have this little uh, place where there is an interval of a diminished fifth if I'm not mistaken from the B to the F so that initially took a little bit of time to work and I don't know if um, I don't know if it ever really was solidified and, and turned out to be solid for everyone, but the pitch that they landed on then, this uh, law here, uh, it turned out to uh, turn quite well in the end. I was just never quite sure about this, this fa here. And that, ha again, has something to do with uh, the, this being a diminished fifth which is a difficult interval for the ear to hear. So, yeah, uh, add a little bit of a, let's see here, move this down, add a little bit of dynamics, not dynamics, uh, some markings here. Uh, I guess they aren't dynamics, so I added a retard at the end, which uh, worked well with the piece having it at the very end and here's another spot where uh, the ending pitches were different from the starting pitch so here we have the me and the do and here they start at the so uh, the fact that it was unison really helped but again that's another transition that needed to be worked on overall nice piece they enjoyed it children enjoyed it i enjoyed it and thank you to candace for that all right then here we move to the seventh and eighth grade songs so this is junior high now and these songs uh, had even less restrictions put on them this was a song that Drew Barnard wrote. I did a great job with it. And at first I was a bit hesitant when Drew asked me if uh, the, the children would be able to sing in Dorian. And I, you know, I frankly didn't know. So some lack of experience on my part there. But it turned out to be quite accessible, I found out. And a very nice melody. So got them uh, a little introduction into modes besides the minor mode. Well, actually, the Dorian mode is somewhat of a minor mode. So uh, here, uh, here we connected this area in, in, uh, for them not to breathe. That worked well. And at the end here, I thought that the text is for the first verse especially was very fitting for it to have like a, 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 a sudden decrescendo there at the end. So uh, we'd echo uh, what we have in measure three. So far away, far away. 
And that, that was a pretty neat thing to do. I think the junior high overdid it just a little bit, but it was a nice effect nonetheless. Here's some other spots that um, we joined together, as in put no breath zones. And then moving on, let me scroll down a little bit. So some more here, uh, where there would be no breath, some more areas here, we would all take a breath. And then we would just go to the end of the song. There was eventually a third verse written by Lynn Martin for this, because this was too nice of a piece just to have two verses on. Um, it would have been nice for this final chord, for this to be uh, Picardy's third here, uh, to be a G, G sharp. But it was getting quite pushed. Uh, with We were getting quite pushed with time. So that didn't happen. But, you know, if I had to do this again, it would have been something nice to, to add there. So yeah, overall, very nice piece, and I'm really happy that we got to do it for the program. So moving on, we come to Christmas Lullaby by Gary Yoder. And this piece was good in that it was in 6-8 timing, which was good 6-8 practice uh, in triple feel. There, uh, the third part turned out not to be alto, but tenor. And uh, here we just had um, lots of things to uh, work on. I, I really like that it had lots of uh, peaks in things like sleep. Uh, yeah, the word sleep appears very often. And I use that as an opportunity to do some diction work. So instead of the children singing sleep, which is very common, I would insist that they would sing sleep to add the little p at the end there. So that was very good. Um, here, moving on to measure 9 and 10, there was a tendency to rush in the tenors at, at this spot. And um, I didn't notice it so much with, with the sopranos. And, and by the way, what I did have here was that the tenors at this stage, uh, the, these would mostly be the 8th grade boys, they just have very, very strong voices. And those that could sing, still who didn't go through a voice break, and those that could sing the alto part, I moved several of them to alto, and one of them I even moved to soprano to help the balance out, because if I left all the boys on tenor, then we would just have tenor overload. But yeah, uh, part, I don't know what it is with, with the boys there that they wanted to rush areas like this. And again, I insisted that there be no break in this area for anyone, and that would help with the, uh, with the crescendo here as well. Um, so yeah, learning experience there. Moving on. So here, a number of the boys could not hit that high C. So I just had them drop out. And moving on, moving on. Uh, here, this was a good chord to practice dissonance on. It's a dissonant chord, which didn't really pose that many problems. And yeah, I don't know if I have anything else to say about this uh, this piece. Very nice. Uh, one of the nice parts at the very end was to really go down in dynamics here to a pianissimo, and then just let that um, uh, let that P just be like the P in sleep, to be just a little bubble popping at the very end. Uh, some some nice word painting there, which I enjoyed uh, to work on, and it just really gave uh, the children a sense of a deeper understanding of how 
yeah, words can be painted with music. So that was really good. Thank you, Gary, for that. Moving on to Joy to the World. As we can see here, this song was to be sung with excitement. And I think in the end, this did turn out to be one of the favorite pieces of junior high. Uh, I think mostly because it wasn't a lullaby. <laughs> Trying to get junior high boys to sing lullabies uh, is quite an endeavor. So uh, what we did was uh, I should have been more diligent in putting markings on, uh, dynamic markings. We started with a pianissimo here and with accents eventually we added accents to to the beats like this and a grand crescendo here to uh, this part with a little theoretical uh, sforzando here uh, which uh, yeah just that they really enjoyed having that dynamic variation there and then we would go back to pianissimo right there uh, another interesting thing was and again this was Wendell Glick's suggestion uh, eventually the rhythm was the same was pretty much like this uh, for both the altos and tenors but then Wendell suggested having a mixed rhythm like you can be seen here and that worked out quite well they enjoyed working uh, on that spot and here was another spot that the tenders, tenors tended to rush on so something to work on oh an interesting thing about this is that initially system breaks like can be seen here uh, they tended to pose a problem uh, because the next pitch uh, was wasn't in sight so that was true for the sopranos where we have the the next pitch being a law going from so to la and before here the altos was going to uh, 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 going to a fa whereas the tenors stayed the same however with the with what they were used to seeing you see you have do 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 re do 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 re do do here they stayed on a do so again something that I told them to write in to make sure that it's not something that will confuse them. So moving on, we have this area where uh, holding this long note for three beats and two beats for the soprano was something that needed to be worked on. Here we have another uh, uh, system break issue where the next pitch for the altos was a fa and that's something that needed to be worked on one thing I learned and again this is where they uh, children sing pitches and then have a rest um, here the altos and tenors had a do and a mi then they had a three beat rest or yeah measure that uh there was no, yeah, it was just rest. And then both of them had to go to different pitches afterwards. And that is something that needed to be practiced. So one of the strategies that I utilized was just to encourage them to audiate what their notes are here in this measure, what their, up, uh, what their upcoming notes are. So what these notes are, and for them to think about those notes for them to write those notes in uh, in those spots so that they would be ready for them so they're hearing them while uh, they're not singing and then this happened here as well for the sopranos and altos so here we have a 
a C going down to a G. Here we have a G going down to a D. So audiation at those uh, spots was something that needed to be worked on. And moving to the very last page, uh, we, uh, there was a bit of a humming part there to give uh, the altos the melody line for a little bit there and then a little echo here for the sopranos and tenors and then at the very end we did a somewhat of a basic repeat of the introduction and finished on that tonic chord there and that was the end so the this is the last piece that we did and I was wondering how long it would take me to do this screencast video I was thinking ah I'll get it over in about what is it uh, 15 minutes <laughs> but as you can see we're way over 45 minutes now so yeah uh, it was a great learning experience again a big big thank you to all those that participated in the project to uh, Beth uh, Lynn let's see us Leah Candice, Gary, Drew, and thank, a big thank you to Wendell for reviewing the pieces, giving his professional insights. They were very, very helpful. And a big thank you to uh, the Game and School that I teach at for sponsoring this project and for being to for being willing to work on uh, the songs, the children there, the administration. It was very nice to be able to pull this off, and it was a learning experience for everyone. So yes, thank you very much for watching, if you've made it this far, and happy music making.